Uh, just, you know, every time anybody would go to the, you know, training room, he was always in there joking around. Um, I think he's definitely a, a mood, like, he brings your mood up a lot. Um, I think that's one thing he did a lot for us. Um, just every day, just training, you know, focused on getting better and every drill, um, every workout, just, you know, competing with guys in the room, just doing everything necessary to make sure that come tomorrow, I'm at the best I could be. Uh, Dallas, I was at Exos. Do I think I'm going to surprise people? Um, I'm definitely going in the, you know, the, um, the shuttle drills. I think I have potential to, you know, break or set a record. Um, just, you know, the times I've been putting up while training, I think are going to be very high. Um, I think it happened pretty natural. Um, definitely one of the better cases in, you know, switching positions so late in your, you know, college career. Um, and, you know, shout out to Coach Harbaugh because it was, you know, a great decision. He, you know, when he called me and asked me to make that, you know, switch, um, he definitely saw something. And, you know, I believed in him. I trusted, it, you know, his vision. And, you know, the mindset I had when switching defense was, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to help this team, help this defense, uh, fill in a spot that was much needed with Dax Hill leaving. Um, so, you know, the transition was, it was pretty easy. Um, I went in there, I, you know, got the playbook right away, wanted to learn as fast as possible so I could have an immediate impact. What are the charges again? Uh, a player's coach, um, a guy who's going to do everything he can to make sure that the guys around him are succeeding, a guy who's going to love his football team, a guy who loves the program, and he's a you know, blue-collar guy who's going to work his tail off to make sure that the program wins. Um, just a guy, you know, even though I'm not, you know, the most physically imposing looking guy, the smaller frame I have, the willingness, like you said, to be able to go down there and, you know, put my pads on somebody or, you know, get myself around the ball and, you know, however that looks, um, that's just what I want to do. I like the physical part of the game. You know, you have pads on for a reason, so there's no point of being scared. Um, you know, you're protected. So use what you have and, you know, get down there, get physical. Um, Mike Hilton, Trent McDuffie, Buda Baker, and uh, Kenny Moore. Those are my four. Uh, I've, I've spoke with the Steelers. I haven't uh, spoke with the Bengals yet. Yeah, I'm Elko Simon. It was real cool, real relaxed. Uh, you know, the whole staff was very welcoming. Um, I enjoyed our conversation. I enjoyed the interview. Um, you know, Coach Harbaugh made the promise while I was being recruited that when my time at Michigan is done, I'm going to be prepared for the next level. Um, he kept that promise true, and that was through every experience on the field and off the field. And I think, you know, everybody in the program from the staff to the players um, definitely helped me get prepared for this moment. And, you know, time and time again, you hear it from people who have left the program that there's no other program that's going to help you get ready for the NFL like Michigan will. So, you know, I'm very appreciative of everything that, you know, I went through at Michigan. And I'm appreciative of all the guys and all the staff that I was able to, you know, go through it with. I'm just having everybody, you know, in the program buy into the same goal. That's what helped us be successful last year. We were all bought into one thing. We had one track mind. We all had a vision. We all did everything we can necessary to you know, get to where we wanted to be. What was that? 
Um, you know, another another year of guys who you know can make plays. You know, with Will Johnson, uh, Makari Page, Rob Moore. Um, you know, those three. There. You know, that's the that's the spearhead right now in the DB room. Um, and I know those guys are going to do a great job of getting everyone else around them prepared. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get transfers in or not, but I know the younger guys that are in that room who had playing time last season are going to, you know, get prepared as well. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do this year. Uh, yeah, I know Coach McDonald's a great coach. Um, just competing against his defense in spring ball and camp, and just seeing what he was able to, you know, get those guys to do during the season. Um, I just know he's a great coach. So you know, playing for him will be awesome. It will be an honor. Um, but yeah, during the, you know, his time at Michigan, I would joke around with him and you know the defensive coaches there, saying, whenever you guys need me on defense, just let me know. I'll come over and you know take a few reps in game practice, whatever it is. I haven't met with him, but I've met with the Seahawks. No. Not formally, no. Not during this process, but I did speak to him a few times during the season and before the season. What does he mean to me? Um, just from a leadership standpoint, he gave me a few, you know, tips on how to hold guys accountable, um, and just you know, the legacy he left at Michigan is one to, you know, you want to live up to that legacy. You know, he was a great DB. He was a great two-way guy. Um, someone that you know what I do, I you know I could say I model, I model what he did. Um, I didn't get the chance of you know go back and play offense how he did. Probably you know if I did, I would have been in the same conversation as him. But just you know a guy like him, um, he means a lot to the program, means a lot to people with the athletic ability that I have. Um, just very instinctual. Um, like I said earlier, just being somebody who knows how to find the football, whether it's in the air, on the ground. Um, I'm just, I would say, very instinctual. No, nah, I think I had to stop myself from trying to find the ball too much in terms of in coverage. Um, and I'm still continuing to work on eye discipline. But I think my instincts and my natural ability to you know, be around the football is what helps me play how I play at the nickel position, especially. Yes, formal. Yeah, I like him a lot. He's a he's a great guy, um, great coach. I used to be, I was I was a big Steelers fan when I was younger. San Antonio Holmes, Antonio Brown. Um, I used to you know love watching those guys at receiver, um, and on defense side you know Troy Palomalu, just seeing what they did, um, and then when they you know won the Super Bowl of course, but uh, you know that team um, I, I used to love the Steelers. But I grew up a Patriots fan. I'm from I'm from Boston, so, but yeah you know Coach Tomlin that staff great staff. Listen, good football is good football at the end of the day. <laughs> Switching leverage, um, not letting him see, you know, disguising certain things. But, you know, one-on-ones is one-on-ones at the end of the day. It's, it's easier to do that, I was saying, seven-on-sevens in team rank. Just knowing that you have to cover for the full length of a play. Um, I think JJ being a risk taker is what makes him who he is. Um, and Coach Harbaugh, you know, he said, you know, JJ, what you do is what you do. I'm not going to take that away from you. That's what allows you to be great. So I think JJ just keeps doing that. Um, and that's why, you know, he's going to continue getting better at the little things. But, you know, that risk taking factor that he has is very special, is very unique. Just being a guy, you know, I, I think everything I do does show up on film from, you know, a guy who's accountable, a guy who shows leadership, um, a good communicator. I think, you know, those those things right there show up themselves. And then, you know, the intangibles, um, like, you know, I'm, I'm responsible. Um, you know, you see that because I was a two-time captain. Um, but, you know, I think I have a very good resume. Um, I think I have a clean slate. And you know I'll be I'll be very appreciative of whoever gives me an opportunity, and I'm excited. Um, and from a business standpoint, you know I'm a guy. You know I create content. I did a lot of that at Michigan, just showing the perspective of a player, showing the team culture that we had. So you know just.
being able, you know, for a guy that I could help bring good business into a program or, you know, to a, uh, you know, whatever team I go to. So all those type of things. Um, just, you know, being myself and, you know, listening to my coaches, taking the coaching, listening to players, understanding what each individual needed. Not everyone is, you know, you can't treat everybody the same way. Every person needs something different, so you have to cater to people differently. And I think, you know, the biggest challenge for me was the younger guys, getting them on the same page as the older guys and, you know, meeting that same standard because, you know, they're the ones that come in not really used to college football, not used to what the program's been. So getting them on the same page as us so, you know, the machine can run as well as it can, um, you know, and I appreciate everybody around me that helped me lead and allowed me to be myself. You said what? I think all of the young DBs, you know, DJ Waller, Jair Hill, um, those two guys are guys I think are going to have a, you know, impact this year. And I'm excited, you know, to see what they do. The Texans? Um, no, not formal. Not formal. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, our defense is very unpredictable. We give a lot of different looks. You know, man might look like zone. Zone might look like man. Um, a lot of disguises, you know, we send pressure from all over the field, you know, and that was shown in the Alabama game. Um, we just, you know, Coach Minner did a great job with just, like I said, just in different situations, not allowing us to be, you know, predicted. Um, and I think, it, you know, our success rate with what he did was very high because of those reasons. Um, Ohio State, they did a good job schematically. You know, they gave us a bunch of different looks, but it ended up being the same thing. Just, you know, we got, they got to different concepts and different formations, different personnel. And, you know, Washington with the shifts, the motions, um, trades, bunches, they just did a lot of stuff from a schematic standpoint that hit a lot of concepts. But, you know, at the end of the day, everything gets to the same place, same spots on the field. Just it's presented to you in a different way. So. Well, how we learned the DB room was same as that was a lot of you know that was our terminology. A lot of things are the same, just shown to you differently. Yeah, I uh, I, I did a lot of Mike Hilton study tape this past off season. Um, I had a few conversations with him as well, and I asked him, what does he do? that helps him, you know, disguise his blitzes and allows him to get there and, you know, his timing and everything. He gave me a few tips on that. But, you know, Mike Hilton was definitely one of the people that I spoke to. Instagram. <laughs> Just, you know, learning the cadence, knowing what your indicators are. And, you know, you have to watch on film to see how much time is on the clock when the offense is snapping the ball, you know, knowing those type of things and just being ready and, you know, knowing the situations like, all right, if it's four down, game on the line like we had Alabama or overtime, um, knowing in the red zone, I'm not going to disguise this blitz, I'm going to show it right now. Or if it's earlier in the game, I'm going to disguise this blitz, I'm not going to show him if I'm inside leverage or if I'm outside leverage, I might line up head up just so he thinks I'm in, you know, true man coverage and I'm coming from the pressure right there. And then also your safeties have to not tip you when, you know, when you're, disguising the blitz. Um, I'll say learn the playbook first. You know, you're not, you're never going to be, no matter what it is you do, if you're not, if you don't know your plays, you're not going to play. So you'll never even be able to showcase that, you know, defensive back talent. Um, and then, you know, take the coaching is different. It's not the same as a receiver. The ball is not being thrown to you. So when you're coming out your breaks, you got to you know, take two steps to the man first. And then understand that you can't get frustrated. You might give up a few plays. People might make a contested catch on you. But how quick can you shift your focus from, all right, I just gave up a play. I got to play the next play.
Um, I, you know, I think just showing my physicality, showing my willingness, um, whether it's in the you know run game or defeating blocks on the edge, uh, playing with good instincts. I think you know those are the things that helped me be successful at the nickel position, and you know why Coach Harbaugh wanted me to play the nickel, as well as being a smaller frame guy. The nickel, I, I wouldn't say, is for smaller guys, but it just it works out for me that way. So, yeah. In, uh, actually, yes, I did actually, uh, formally. Yep. It went well. I enjoy, yeah, I enjoyed my meeting with that staff. Did you know anything about Ryan Nielsen before No, I did not. I know about Denard Robinson, though. Um, natural strength, uh, you know, the foods we eat, um, I think it just, you know, gives you a lot of natural strength. I'm not sure why. I think Haitians are cut from a different cloth. I think we're just wired differently. Um, so, you know, shout out to my Zoe culture. That's a secret weapon. There's a lot. It's, I, I can't really give you a specific. It's just so much, so much good food you can't really choose. Yeah. based off my defense or my defensive knowledge. Um, you know, I think just knowing the fact that, like, you know, I've been a sponge to, you know, or I've been very open to learning. Um, so, you know, when I switched to defense, I was in the, you know, film room the next day learning our defense. So asking questions, you know, to the coaches, to the players, um, you know, note taking, all those things, just expanding my knowledge every single day makes, makes it very easy to, you know, go up there and do board work. And then, you know, from a, a playing standpoint, having an offensive background, it makes it so much easier for me to determine what I'm going to get in certain situations. Um, you know, locating receiver splits, down the distance, all of those things help play factors into, you know, my knowledge to the game.